Hey guys, this is Justin. Hello and welcome to another video. We're about 11 days out from the launch of Star Wars Jedi Survivor. I think now would be a great time to start talking about some of the bigger questions poised by the game. And one thing that you guys have really been eager for me to talk about is the topic of Grey Jedi and specifically whether after the events of the story, Cal should from this point be considered a Grey Jedi. Now, interestingly, I sort of unknowingly did what I think is actually a pretty good video on Grey Jedi just a few weeks ago. I'm going to encourage you guys to watch that if it's a topic you're interested in, but for necessity, I'm going to summarize some of the key points here. Grey Jedi are a controversial element of the lore, and they'd be controversial within universe as well. There are really two definitions of Grey Jedi, which are sometimes used interchangeably, which can make the entire discussion difficult. So it's important we really understand what we're talking about here. The term Grey Jedi can at times be used to describe an individual who fights for goodness and and sort of the Jedi way, while also using the dark side of the Force. Funny enough, the idea of Grey Jedi existing in this manner largely comes from video games, with fans sometimes conflating gameplay elements with philosophical discussions of the Force. For example, yes, Kyle Katarn, or your Jedi in KOTOR, can learn Force Lightning while still following the path of the light side, that doesn't necessarily mean that's how the story is meant to be told. There are different philosophies of the Force meant to examine and discuss whether Grey Jedi in this fashion could possibly exist. I'm sure there were discussions about this being had on Jedha. The Potentium Theory from Star Wars Legends is the idea that it's the intention of an individual, not their actual actions or force power, which defines whether they are good or evil. That stands in stark contrast to the teachings of, for example, Master Yoda, who tells us that when you travel down the dark side even a little bit, it will forever dominate your destiny. And I do believe that Yoda's mostly right here and that Grey Jedi in this fashion don't really exist. The story Star Wars tells us, especially in Return of the Jedi and Revenge of the Sith, is that even when one has pure intentions, whether saving your wife and unborn children or trying to defeat the Empire, giving in to hate always takes you down a bad path. But as mentioned, that's only one definition of Grey Jedi. I'm going to come back in a minute and talk about whether I think Cal fits it or not. The other, I'd say, more commonly used definition when actually looking at the lore is a Jedi who still holds themselves as a Jedi or at least as a Jedi like individual but flaunts or ignores some of the structural elements of the Jedi Order. Great examples of this would be for example Qui-Gon Jinn or Jolie Bindo who often just ignored the rules of the council. Others like Ahsoka are obviously very Jedi like despite not taking the name Jedi or following the specific rules. Ahsoka after being kicked out of the Order that is obviously. So does does Cal fit into one or even both of these categories? Let's talk about the story of Jedi Survivor with full spoilers. First off, I don't think Cal is meant to be the meme version of the Grey Jedi. You know that fan and code we talked about in the video about how Grey Jedi embrace passion and peace, serenity and emotion, chaos and order, both sides of the force? I don't think that's Cal. I think the story of Star Wars Jedi Survivor is Cal fighting against this darkness. We see it very early on with the death of his friends on Coruscant. And and by the end of the game, it's very clear that this is something he's struggling with, not embracing. Cal does lean on the dark side for those boosts of power that Yoda warned about. An easier path to success, but not a better one. And based on this conversation with Marin, and especially that last scene where he talks to almost the specter of Seer, it's pretty clear, I think, that he's trying to avoid that, to move past it, that it's a weakness in him, not something he wants to embrace. Simply being a Jedi who has fallen to the dark side temporarily doesn't make you a gray Jedi. And I don't think it fits Cal by that definition. The other one is pretty interesting though. Cal holds himself up as a Jedi. He's not like Ahsoka, for example, who espouses most of the features of a Jedi, but doesn't take the name. Rather, he's openly a Jedi. He calls himself a Jedi Knight, but we see throughout the game that he is throwing off some of the shackles of the Jedi Order, specifically in their rules against attachment. Most obviously, he does develop that romantic relationship with Marin, but he also develops incredibly deep connections to his entire sort of adopted family, which likely would not be allowed under the Jedi Code. Is this enough to classify him as a Grey Jedi? No, I don't think so. Especially in an era where the Jedi Order no longer exists and he's simply trying to survive. I mean, it's definitely the first step down that path, but it's not like he openly flaunts his disagreements with the core tenets of the Jedi Order. And 
And in a similar way, despite some of what I said earlier, I don't think Ahsoka, who sort of went down a similar path, also fits the idea of a gray Jedi. To me, it's more somebody who fights for the light side of the Force, or just goodness generally, without following, I don't want to say any of the teachings of the Jedi, but the general idea of what it is to be a Jedi. The attachment thing is important, but to me, it's not foundational to the Jedi Order to the point where you can't be a Jedi and still hold attachments, even if you're violating the code of the Order. So no, I don't think Cal is a gray Jedi. I think he's, like the title of the game, a Jedi survivor who's somewhat changed changed philosophies in the face of a new predicament. Just my thoughts though, if you have different feelings, I'm sure you'll let me know down below. Before we end today's video though, because this is a short one, I will take a second to check the hashtag ask Ek questions. And this one comes from Jackson who says, now that Ahsoka is coming, can you please break down some chiss ships like the torpedo boat or the man of war from the Thrawn Ascendancy novels? And unfortunately, those novels give us very, very little in terms of hard information about the ships. You hear about chiss battle cruisers or warships or whatever else. Yes, the man of war. But really, we get very little about the actual design, except for the fact that technologically, these ships are significantly lagging behind what the rest of the galaxy has. Chiss ships do not have shields. From what I remember, and it's been a while since I've read the trilogy, they rely somewhat on reflective plating, but largely things like chaff. Energy weapons also aren't as powerful as the turbo lasers of the main galaxy. And the ships also are significantly smaller. Again, I don't remember specifics, but I think they're about Corvette size, maybe slightly larger, and that's kind of it. In Star Wars canon, the Chiss have developed completely independently of the rest of the galaxy. I mean, that was true in Star Wars Legends as well, where they're very insular, but their technology has really diverged in how it's developed. Similar in Star Wars Legends, we learn a bit about the Chiss capital ships, especially when Thrawn returns to the galaxy and afterwards, but besides for the Chiss clawcraft, not a whole lot else. That's all for today though guys, I'll see you soon.